Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Tuesday, March 18th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, new reports of the NSA recording 100% of telephone calls. Then, a professor calls for climate change skeptics to be put in jail. And what would you do if your child was strip searched at school? That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. You're not going to ride around in a bunch of black war wagons and have your way with our wives. When you start this, we're going to stomp your ass into the ground. Well, remember when the NSA said they were just collecting that metadata? Well, they lied. They've been collecting 100% of an entire country's phone conversations. This is according to some leaked documents by Edward Snowden. The NSA's Mystic program has been recording 100% of a country's phone calls, although the Washington Post won't report which country that is. They're honoring the request of U.S. officials. But the surveillance program's retro tool allows for retrieval of up to 30 days worth of entire phone conversations nationwide. Some of the documents provided by Snowden suggest that high volume eavesdropping may be soon extending to other countries as well if it hasn't already. Based on Retro's internal reviews, the NSA has strong motive to deploy it elsewhere because Retro is uniquely valuable when an analyst first uncovers a new name or a telephone number of interest. It'll give them up to 30 days of recorded conversations in hand. The NSA can pull an instant history of the subject's movements, associates, and plans. And also, curiously, other U.S. intelligence agencies also have access to Retro. Now, of course, this retro program includes sweeping up the phone conversations of Americans as well. And this is why these Snowden leaks just seem so fishy to me, because it's just this slow drip of information and it's just sort of desensitizing us to the fact that we are under mass surveillance at all times. First, we learned it was just a small metadata collection and now as this progresses, we are learning that it's actually quite overreaching and it's going to be now extending to other countries. It's collecting up, vacuuming up content of Americans' phone conversations as well. Total disregard for the Constitution. But that's why, you know, something's fishy with this Snowden leaks. I just, it's just a little weird to me. It feels like it's an, a mission to desensitize us and to have us just accepting of our constitutional rights being violated in the name of national security, which of course is not to protect you or I, it's to protect the state. Now, another place where your rights, apparently I had no idea where you, your constitutional rights do not apply, private schools. A mother testified in a federal court this week that school officials in Pennsylvania told her that they were within their rights to strip search her daughter, asserting that this girl doesn't have constitutional rights because she's in a private school. Now, this incident occurred last year. Officials ordered the girl to remove her shirt because they suspected she had a cell phone on her person. Now, such devices are considered contraband at this school, which is described as a cost-free, private co-educational home and school for pre-K through 12th grade students from the families of low income, limited resources, and social needs. So it's not an elite private institution. It is a private school for lower income families who apparently aren't welcome to having any constitutional rights. Now the court complaint states that the school's nurse touched her all over her body, including her chest, feeling for a smartphone, no phone was found. Now the mother, Trina Howes, is suing the school, saying that the procedure was conducted without her knowledge or presence. And when Howes called a student home supervisor, she was told that the girl doesn't have constitutional rights because she's in a private school and that the school is backed up by the Derry County Police Department. And it is what it is, Ms. Howes. And that's, we're hearing that a lot, you know, it is what it is, I'm the master, you're the slave, and these institutions are, getting away with this action, basically just saying, hey, it is what it is. Now, Howe's complaint states that her daughter's rights under the 4th and 14th Amendment should ensure personal security and bodily integrity and freedom from governmental intrusion. But a local law professor questioned whether that case will succeed because the Constitution protects against government intrusion, but not necessarily against private citizens or organizations. 
So they are seeking in excess of $75,000 plus damages and attorney's fees. But there are going to be, you're going to be hearing of even more fines and jail time for all of you climate deniers out there if a professor gets his way. A professor at the Rochester Institute of Technology is calling for the incarceration of any American who actively disagrees that climate change is solely caused by human activity. Philosophy professor Lawrence Torcello argues that malignant individuals are collectively organizing a campaign funding misinformation about climate change. He's adding that science misinformation surrounding climate change should be considered a crime. And he asks readers to consider cases in which science communication is intentionally undermined for political and financial gain. Um, Monsanto, chemtrails, no, he's not talking about that. But according to a Gallup poll conducted earlier this month, two-thirds of Americans do not believe that the colder temperatures the country has been experiencing is related to human-caused climate change or global warming. This means two-thirds of Americans would be at risk of being deemed as criminals for expressing these beliefs. And the latest person he could lock up would be the Greenpeace co-founder Patrick Moore, who testified in front of a Senate committee last month that there is no scientific proof that human emissions of carbon dioxide are the dominant cause of the minor warming of the Earth's atmosphere over the past 100 years. And according to the latest temperature data from two U.S. government bureaucracies, NASA and NOAA, the pause or hiatus in global warming is still ongoing. So there you go, Professor Torcello. Lock up those guys. They are definitely thought criminals working for our government. Ooh, who knew? Now, a lot of people are asking about Crimea's vote to secede from the Ukraine. Is it legal? Well, it depends on who you ask, depending on who answers that question, it was either an unconstitutional split manipulated by Russia or a move that was consistent with international law upholding the region's right to govern itself. Now, the U.S. and its European allies say Sunday's referendum vote violated Ukraine's newly reforged constitution. Moscow asserts that the Ukrainian president, Viktor Yanukovych, was ousted in an illegal coup, which ended Ukraine's constitutional authority. Now, the U.S. is buying into the argument of the Ukraine government, which is that the secession of Crimea from Ukraine is not constitutional under the terms of the Ukrainian constitution, which was, by the way, just rewritten by the interim government that the U.S. and the EU helped to put in power, mind you. So they're saying that this new constitution we just drafted, you violated it. Now, the alternative argument is that all peoples have a right of self-determination and that if the people of Crimea choose not to be part of the Ukraine, that is their prerogative in the same way that it was the choice of colonial powers to break away from the imperial powers that claimed them. So again, like Ron Paul said, they've got the law on their side. This is according to international law, not to this new constitution that's been drafted by this interim government that's questionably put in place after a violent coup overthrew their democratically elected president. Now, on this speculation about the crash, the I'm sorry, not the crash, the Malaysian Airlines Flight 370, some people are wondering, did it crash? Was it hijacked? Was it, did it land somewhere? Did the pilot maliciously fly the plane into the ocean? No one knows, but one speculator is an actual pilot. He is now saying that Perhaps there was a fire on board the plane and that a pilot's standard operating procedure in such a scenario could account for almost all of the evidence surrounding the missing plane. He said, I tend to look for a simpler explanation and I find it with a 13,000 foot runway at Pulau Longkawi. The most likely explanation for that sharp turn was to make an emergency landing at a nearby airport. And he added that a landing gear fire is also entirely possible, especially on underinflated tires, which is common on large airliners, during a hot night on a long runway. And if the blowout occurred during takeoff, the resulting fire would burn slowly, but eventually produce horrific, incapacitating smoke. 
thinking the flight crew was probably overcome by smoke and the plane continued on the heading, probably on autopilot, until it ran out of fuel or the fire destroyed the control surfaces and it crashed. So it's a very simple and plausible explanation, but the belief of investigators remains that the plane was deliberately diverted and that foul play was involved. The fact that the flight change was manually typed into a computer, most likely programmed by someone in the plane's cockpit who was very knowledgeable about an airplane system, has has increased their focus on the plane's captain and the first officer rather than a passenger or a hijacker. Now, residents of a small island in the Maldives have reported seeing a low-flying plane, and Australia and Indonesia have also agreed to split up their search over large swaths of the Indian Ocean. Well, coming up after the break, another change to Obamacare is going to allow insurance companies to keep even more of your money. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. Celebrate the spirit of 1776 with the George Washington brass belt buckle or this incredibly sharp looking 1776 hat. Badass. And be sure to check out the new arrivals at InfoWars Life, where you can prepare your body to perform at peak levels with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine, Super Male Vitality, and Fluoride Shield. And wake up, America. Immune Support Blend is the healthy choice for the gourmet coffee lover. So get incredibly high-quality, freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Well, today we're reporting on another young banker suicide. This will be the 12th this year in the financial world and another connection to JP Morgan. This time the latest death occurred on March 12th when 28-year-old Kenneth Bolando was found on the sidewalk outside his six-story Manhattan apartment building after he allegedly jumped. Now, before moving into his last position as an investment banker for Levi Capital, Bolando worked as an investment banker at J.P. Morgan Chase. His brother, John Bolando, also works at J.P. Morgan as an investment officer, and the New York Post stated that multiple emails by John Bolando were presented as evidence during Senate hearings regarding the London whale trading scandal. Now, Kenneth Bolando's death marks the 12th time this year that an employee in the financial world has taken his or her own life around the globe. Now, the fact that many of these suicides have been from leaping from buildings has suicide prevention experts puzzled. According to the chief medical officer of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, jumping is much less common as a method for suicide in general. So. I'm struck by the number that have occurred in recent months in this industry. Now, police don't suspect a third party and haven't said whether Bolando left a... 